Sports fans to our new format here on the Euronasca YouTube channel. It's me, Andre Wiegold. I'm an editor and the reporter of the NASCAR Win News Series. And with me is the PR manager of the series, Gianluca Guilia. And we will take you behind the scenes of the new Euronasca Series, the official European NASCAR Series. And the 2020 season is in the books. We have crowned two champions and five trophy, win trophy winners. And one of them is Julia Landauer, who finished fifth overall and won the Euronasca 2 Lady Trophy and finished third in the Rookie Trophy. In a completely new environment for her, and with all the challenges of this well, really peculiar season, she gathered three top fives and seven top tens in ten uh, rounds. Uh, she is also the second woman to ever climb on, uh, on the overall podium of an Oscar Wheel and Euro Series race uh, after Carol Perrin did it in Spa, Franco Champ in Belgium, in 2012. So please welcome Julia Landauer. Welcome, Julia. Thank you for having me. Miss you guys. It's been a whole week already. <laughs> oh, yes. It's been long. It's been long. Uh, are you back in the U.S.? I am. I made it home safely. It took quite a few flights to get from Valencia to Charlotte, but I made it. It's really nice. It's amazing how easy everything is at home as opposed to being in Europe when like the grocery stores are different, the language is different. So it's, um, it's nice to be home. The first question is, well, what are you bringing back with you? What did you bring back with you? Both uh, personally, uh, and physically? Belgian beer? Good question. So we had quite a few trophies between the rookies and the lady trophies and the podium. Um, I actually left them with Anthony and the PK Car Sport team to mail back because uh, I may or may not have collected a little bit of French wine while I was gone and needed to put that in my suitcase. So I had to, I was at weight, but um, no, it was great. It was a really successful season, and I was happy to, you know, be able to pop champagne on the podium and, um, you know, take a lot of memories and new friendships and um, all of that. You are back to Europe. You told me before this broadcast that you have been to Europe several times, but what is the most memorable moment you had in the last season? Oh, there were a lot of memorable moments. Um, it was really cool to be able to go to Belgium and hang out with the team and just, you know, be with them as we prepare for race weekends. Um, you know, I think the first top five I got at Zolder in the rain was really exciting. Um, and obviously getting on the overall podium in Valencia was great. And then before away from the track before the lockdown in France, I was able to take a little trip to the south of France and have a little bit of a European vacation. And then the weekend I got back, we went into lockdown. So it was a weird season for sure. What were the highest points and the lowest points in this, as you said, weird season? Highest points were definitely the podiums and, and also just the good runs, you know, even in Valencia, I went from 13th to fifth in one of the races and to be able to pass that many people and then, you know, to later get the podium was really cool. Um, it was great to, to meet everyone and to just be part of the series. Uh, low parts were, you know, I definitely got homesick at times. Um, it was hard to be in a country where I don't really speak the language and um, to be away from all my friends and family, especially around our Thanksgiving at the end of November. Um, and then there were some rough moments on track with collisions, but overall it was, it was really good. Well, uh, what were the, well, you mentioned already that um, being away from home was quite a big challenge. Uh, what were the other challenges in this season? Maybe being, in new, uh, being new to the series, or to most of the tracks. Yeah, so I really hadn't done a lot of racing in 2018 and 2019. And so I, you know, just again, I think I had like five or six races altogether in those two years. So in the Pinty series, so I was, you know, just hadn't raced in a while. And then I had to learn the car. It's a very new car. It handles differently than the K&N car or the Pinty's car, uh, learning all the new racetracks. Um, and as I think most road course racers will tell you, uh, oval racing is really different. And so even just how you pass people, how you set up passes, how, how long it takes to learn a track, it's all different. And then 
you know, meshing with the new team, PK Carsport and Anthony and everyone were incredible to work with. They made that part pretty easy, but you're still, you know, I was still the new driver coming onto the team needing to prove myself. So it was, I, my plate was full. I felt a lot better towards the end, but it was still, it was still challenging. You already already mentioned your racing past. You raced in all international NASCAR series except Mexico. Now, um, how does it feel to race outside of the United States or states or North America? It's really cool. Canada feels pretty similar to the U.S., but uh, the European series is really different. And I know that we didn't get to fully experience what the pits are like and what the garage is like because we were in our bubbles uh, because of COVID restrictions, but. Like the the atmosphere is definitely different and there's a different feel to how the racing is and culturally it's obviously very different. So I had a lot of fun. It was um, really enjoyable to be able to experience different types of racing. And you have been to many countries and you have seen a lot of new tracks, but which one was your favorite one and why? Ooh, good question. Um, Valencia was so much fun. It was really challenging like i think visually it was a really hard track to drive because there's so much off camber corners the way the sun was was really blinding a lot of the time um and i just felt like it was the most interesting track um i also i really i really liked all of them but um i i was a little disappointed i didn't get to do zolder in the dry we had all wet sessions for me and so i think that I had fun there, but I can't wait. I hope I get to try it in the dry because that was, it would be really cool and really technical, I think. Just one uh, more from my side. Um, what is the most entertaining, interesting, or maybe strange situation you have off track? Because we saw a lot of racing um, in front of the camera in the live stream, but you may experience something that will stuck in your head forever because it was somewhere off track and people have not seen it already. Like off track, but at the racetrack? Or... Wherever you want, in, in the whole year. Well, it was really interesting living with my boyfriend's parents without him being there in France. That was just an interesting, I'm not sure. I'm glad I got to do it. I'm not sure I would recommend it for everyone. Um, so that was interesting. Also, okay, the hardest part for me was the way that we drive on the street in the US is different than in Europe. And I learned how speed cameras work and that you can very easily get tickets for going a couple kilometers off over the speed limit. And I definitely got a few tickets while I was in Europe in a few different countries. So uh, those are still coming in the mail. So when, you, when, when you come to our, my home country, Germany, there are a lot of parts where you can drive as fast as you want. So maybe you will like this more. <laughs> I got to go on the Autobahn when I drove to Croatia and that was so great. I didn't get a ticket there, but I did get a ticket in a different part of Germany. So, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what are the best for the off season and in general for the future, of course? Off season is a whole lot of sponsorship hunting. Uh, I really hope I'm able to put together the budget to come back next year. I would really like that. But, um, you know, the pandemic has made everything hard. Um, so doing a lot of sponsorship hunting, trying to lock that in. I do motivational speaking. And so I have quite a few virtual keynotes that I'll be doing. Um, but then, uh, you know, just trying to get everything in line for next year. It's, it's hard this year because our season ran so late um so there's only a really short basically off season to try to put it together so it's going to be working pretty hard for the next couple months that's great thank you so much julia for joining us um and of course to the race fans outside out there uh please stay tuned on our youtube channel youtube.com because there will be more to come um andre Yes, and please follow us also on social media. We have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And there will be a lot of stuff, a lot of news um, for the upcoming season, the 2021 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. So with that said, thank you so much, Julia, for joining us. And all of you, have a good evening, have a good day, and see you soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you.